language. project here that's uh, it's going to be a very quick video to uh, show something that I made recently uh, for trapping you got to have a good ice chisel and I picked this thing up from the Alberta Trappers Association store in Westlock it's, uh, it's reputed to be a very good ice chisel it's heavy it's about the right length and it has a nice uh, head design to it but it came with a very flimsy chintzy sort of uh, a uh, sheet or covering the cutting head. So what I did is I put together my own little sheet and I'd like to share that with you. Uh, at the end of this video, uh, on the end screen, I'm going to have uh, my email address. So if you're interested in having a pattern for this, then just fire me off an email and I'll send you off a PDF document with uh, drawn to scale with all the dimensions on it. So if you like that, this. Uh, I don't know how many people are using this chisel, but if you do, or if you're planning to, it is a good chisel, and this sheath can be made very quickly. So let's just take a quick look at what kind of materials are needed. On the channel, we have, I have lots of videos on leather work, so if you want to get into this stuff, I highly encourage you to do so. It's very satisfying, saves you a lot of money, and you can make everything custom the way you want it. Okay, let's take a look here at the basic equipment you need. You got to have flax. I use this uh, wax flax, very strong. You want to have needles for for sewing. That's uh, this is not a very sharp needle. It doesn't have to be sharp, and you use two of them to do a saddle stitch. That's all covered in the other videos on the channel here. And a knife, a pair of pliers to help push the needle through some holes. I don't have a, uh, a cutting fork shown on this table, but I pound uh, holes through the leather so that I make the hole spaced and cut through already when I'm doing my saddle stitch on this. So in addition to that, you got to have yourself some uh, closers and some rivets. Uh, Use little anvils. These things come from the craft stores or wherever you buy these rivets and fasteners. And you want to have a, a board to pound pound into when you're cutting holes. So I use a little hole punch like that. And uh, you got to have a, a drift and, uh, and a hammer. That's really about it. So, you know, it's... Uh, this this, uh, this chisel here, you can see it's uh, made of steel. This is just really a prototype, but it's going to work just fine anyway. So if you want to make one of these yourself, I have the plans available for you. It's always satisfying to make your own stuff. That's the way I like to do things anyways. Okay, let's take a little look at this chisel sheath. I'll uh, show you what the uh, sheath was that came with it originally. It's this little rubbery thing, which frankly I don't have a lot of confidence in it lasting through hard use. So what we got here is this. Now I'll emphasize that this is just a prototype. It's the first one I made. So. I did put rivets in here, but I made it purposely small so that I, I could soak the sheath and then pressure fit the chisel into it. So I wound up taking out these rivets because actually they just popped from the pressure. But the ones down here are quite necessary because you're going to have sharp points going in against this seam and you don't want the chisel to cut through your, your stitching. Along the side here, it doesn't really matter. I, more or less originally put those in just for looks, just to make it look nice, but not necessary. So if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't put rivets in these two locations. But if you, if you want to take a look at how this, this fits here, that's 
basically the sheath. And just put a couple of snaps on here to go around the shaft to hold it in place. And I think you can see from this that, that it's molded nicely to the shape of the chisel. And you can slip it on there without any difficulty and just snap that on there. Actually, you could even probably leave that off. If you make it a good tight fit, it's probably not going to fall off anyways, but just for completeness. And another thing I'll mention too is uh, uh, this is not the right kind of end piece for this, this snap here. I chose the wrong one, which still works anyways, but uh, little, this, this thing I made up really quick, like not much more than an hour do most of the work. So I just slapped it together, but while I did it, or after I did it, I thought I should maybe make a set of plans for this and put that on uh, my Google Drive for to share it with anybody else. Uh, not everyone has this particular kind of ice chisel, but if you do, it's a very good one. It's sold at the Alberta Alberta Trappers Association store in Westlock and it's highly recommended. It's the one that doesn't tend to jump out of your hand as you're pounding into the ice and it cuts a hole very quickly. So uh, I uh, thought that you know being one that's never satisfied with the way things come from the factory I thought well I should make a little bit better sheath for it than it comes with and it's not hard to do. Now if you want to see some other videos on leather work, I have quite a few on this channel. I encourage you to subscribe if you if you haven't already. It uh, really helps out. Uh, the channel keeps things coming and uh, new content. I always try to focus on things that are useful to you. So click like on this video and until next time from the Weighted Native Chronicles, God bless.